Hey guys, how's it going? Today I wanna to show you how I made this video using no transition packs or external plugins. I made it purely just on Premiere Pro and I basically wanna do a little breakdown of how I made this video. So first, let's jump into the video and then I'll show you how I made it. So at the time, a couple of years back, I was really inspired by this guy called Buck Visuals. Um, I'll link down his Instagram in the description below. And basically he does a lot of these cool transitions. A lot of his content is around cars. So in the end he was filming like Formula One cars and all of this. And I, uh, I was just really captivated by his content. It really inspired me a lot. And at the time I was working a lot in the music scene. So I was filming a lot of DJs and just like studio builds and stuff like that. And I would use these kind of same transitions as him to kind of make my work a bit more interesting. He did basically just a little breakdown video of how he does his transitions. So I kind of learned how to use this style from him. So I've got to kind of admit that basically but it was something I was really inspired by and I was using this transition on a lot of my a lot of my videos and I think it's great to kind of be able to create transitions within the software without needing external plugins or to rely too heavily on on external stuff and it's the same with things like you know color packs and everything else I always believe that you know if you can kind of really try and use stuff within the software first and then just like take an extra stuff if you need to. You're just gonna get a lot better at using the software and, and building stuff from scratch. So this is based in Premiere Pro because that was predominantly what I was editing at the time. So jumping into the software now, you can see here uh, a bit of like the video and you can see like obviously how I kind of edit a lot of the time with an event video is these are all the parts I haven't used, right? So this is just the part I have used. And a bit of a breakdown how I'd edit really an event video is I would literally just, you know, film as much as I can during the event and then dump all the footage inside the software and kind of scrub through it all really fast. So I would literally just be rolling through it like super fast trying to find clips I like. You know, you can come away with hundreds of gigabytes worth of footage sometimes if you're filming an event. But I kind of know what I'm after and what I like and what I don't like. Um, having said that, actually, there's a lot of parts of this clip that I didn't use that I actually really like now. If I was probably to, like I said, I made this video a couple of years back, so if I was to probably make this video again, I would probably do different stuff. But at the time, this is how I kind of made it. And then what I'd basically do is, all the bits I like, I'd basically just dump them on the timeline. Um, and I'd do that first, kind of just get clips I like, get clips I like, and then afterwards kind of start working into them and trying to build them into some sort of structure. I remember the night I made this because I was asleep in bed and I couldn't wait to kind of get up and just edit it. And I couldn't sleep properly and it was like, four, it got to about four in the morning and I was like still wide awake, I couldn't sleep all night. And in the end I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna edit it. So I just got up in the middle of the night and just started editing it and I literally made it within like maybe an hour and then just went back to sleep. Um, so it was quite like once it started flowing, it, it kind of flows easily once you know your structure and stuff or once you get like a hook. That's what I'm always kind of looking for is some sort of like hook that, that's gonna make the video uh, kind of inspirational to me. Well, I remember with this video I was making it and then actually feeling like the order was wrong and the second half was much better than the first half. So I like switched, like switched the whole just video around and like put the, you know, the second half first. And then it just seemed to like work a lot better. So sometimes it's also just like working into something to kind of get it how you want. And one thing that was really inspired as well by Bach visuals was the um, kind of like tilted camera. I remember like a lot, you see a lot of like um, videographers who film in cars kind of do that where they're like, Tilt the car, um, tilt the camera a little bit to the side, like you know these kind of shots here. So I was always kind of like, you know, with a gimbal, kind of throwing the camera around in many different ways. So that's why a lot of the footage kind of comes out quite crooked as well. It was just uh, like pretty inspirational at the time for me to do that. But yeah, it's kind of mad. Like looking back at these, some of these shots, I don't know why I didn't put them in. I'm actually they look pretty cool. Maybe I need to do a second version of this video. This is how I created these clips. So you can see here, I've got big, big speed ramps. And if you're not quite sure what a speed ramp is, I'll show you how to make one now. So I'm just gonna call this main copy. And I'm basically gonna um, try and duplicate what I did here. Sometimes though, you know, these things are so fine tuned, especially when you're dealing with speed ramps and stuff, that it's quite hard to kind of like almost mimic what you did. And you have to kind of like uh, try and recreate it again. Uh, recreating it again is actually quite quite difficult. So the first clip we have is this one here. And uh, and then it goes into this clip here. So I'm gonna show you how I kind of like made that. So this was the first clip. And as you can see, it looks so different, un unedited, right? It's so much slower. And um, and also, 
one thing that did really help with this as well was I, you know, I was moving the camera in ways that kind of like did go down at certain sections. So it was like almost made it easier to, it was kind of filmed it knowing that I was going to make certain transitions with it. So it helped with the way I was moving the camera. What I kind of want to do first basically just create a little speed ramp. So I'm going to right click on the little box here in the corner and you can go to time remapping and then speed. And it'll bring this little line up here and that's basically a representation of the speed of your clip now. And what you can do is add little key points in and start, um, you know, adding speed ramps in to change the, the speed of the clip in various points. So I'll show you. So say, say you want to speed the clip up from here. If you press P on the keyboard, which also brings up your pen tool, you can click down on that little thing, click down on the little section, it'll bring up that little divider there. And from now, anything that I use on this side of the clip will speed up. And you can see it's got the time there, so it's 160, 145%. And I can imagine that I went up to this like really high. It probably went up to, yeah, 543. If I drag this all the way up to 543, I would have thought it'd be quicker than that. Sometimes I've literally dragged these up to like a couple of thousand. And then what you want to do is basically drag this out to create the ramp. So as you can see, so it starts off at 100% and it speeds up right to 543%, right? So, and what you can do is you can even make, turn this little curvature if you, and it will make the ramp a bit more smoother. So now I'm gonna make the whole clip a bit quicker as well because it was definitely quicker. Maybe I'll take it up to 150. You see that speed ramp coming. There's also a speed ramp coming in, so I'm just going to add a speed ramp coming in as well. It definitely looked like it was even faster than how I've got it at the moment, though. So maybe that's one thing I used to do a lot as well when I was filming events was basically I'd speed up the clips by a lot. You know, sometimes like 150 percent, 200 percent. It just gives it like a sense of chaos and, and craziness. Even workout videos, I used to do this a lot too as well. I say I used to I still do shoot a lot of workout videos. So I would kind of like speed up the um, the timing to kind of give it that a bit more like a bit of a more of a chaotic feel. Um, so let's watch that coming in now. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's kind of weird. There's no camera movement coming out. So I'm not quite sure why it is maybe it just because it rolls straight into this one. So let's type and remap this now. Speed. Do that again. And so I've got so I've got a speed ramp now coming in one clip and out of the other. I'm just going to speed up a bit more. Yeah, you can see there the time remap and what's happening there. That's how the clip so. Oh, I don't like this clip going out. I think for some reason this might need to be a bit longer. Maybe. No, it goes back up. So I want to try and get the camera moving. It's moving a little bit down. Yeah, you kind of want to get the cameras when they're, you kind of want to get the camera when it's moving roughly in the same way. Otherwise it's a bit, um, you know, you don't want one camera kind of moving in the scene that way. And then it's like moving back out of the scene and on another section, because otherwise it wouldn't really seem too seamless, right? But that's basically how I did it. As I mentioned though, you need to mess around with this a lot. Like sometimes I'll mess around with these little speed ramps and just get them exactly how I want to, um, really messing around with the timings and so much stuff. Can you see what's also happening here is my computer's lagging a bit. When you're speeding stuff up sometimes, the computer is struggling to play all those frames at once. So that's what's happening here a bit. It's kind of got a bit of a jolty notion. Um, yeah, but as you can see, it's kind of got there, right? But um, the edited one is a bit better. So I probably spent a while just getting it exactly how I want to. Whereas obviously I don't want to like bore you with making it quite tedious. And also you're going to have your own footage to kind of do this with. So really mess around with it and really work into it till you're happy with it. I've just dropped the color grade on there and I think that helps a bit as well to obviously look how it looked in the actual video. So this is how I kind of got it to. So you can see like the transition looks pretty cool. It definitely looks like it's moving in the right direction now, right? So as you can see, that's basically just a simple transition using speed ramping and it kind of uh, gives you a lot more control over the, over the clip. And the other thing I did to give it a bit more of a a smooth motion was added this blur effect in here. So the re how I did that was, 
So basically what you'll need is an adjustment layer. And I'll just literally drag that between the two clips. And then what we're going to go into is directional blur. Drag that on your clip. And then I kind of would try and go with the camera movements a little bit. So if that's kind of, you can kind of see the, the way they're moving as well. So like put blur length up and then kind of, you can rotate it to get the cam the blur how you like it. So it's kind of getting there. And then what I'll do basically is you can add key points in to bit of them between the blur. So say that the middle of the transition is here, right? And I can see it on my timeline here. I would heighten that because that's the height of the have of the length, right? That's the height of the where I want the blur to be. And then I'm gonna put, and then I'm gonna make these um, zero and then go back to zero. And I'm gonna copy these as well. So I'm gonna hold Alt and it will copy them, keyframes. So now it starts off at zero and as, it, and as it's moving around, it blurs and then it comes back down to zero. So you see here, look, you just kind of want to create a lot of motion. You don't want to um, kind of blur the whole thing out together. So I think like originally I would have made that a bit longer going in and out. Yeah, it's quite quick still. Maybe like blur it coming out a bit. It's kind of getting there, right? That's like lagging a little. You can kind of see it now. I think originally I made it a bit too fast. So yeah, you just kind of want to start working into things. There you go, it's kind of getting there now. So that's basically it. That's kind of how simple it is, right? It's a super, super simple technique um, using speed ramping, but when used properly, it's, it's quite effective. And uh, you know, when I first did this, people were like, oh my God, how did you do that and all that? But like, it's actually, people think you've used some crazy transition pack, um, but actually it's quite straightforward. Yeah, definitely think how you can use that to make your videos more interesting. And obviously, you know, there's nothing wrong with using preset packs as well. I use a lot of LUT packs and stuff like that. So there is a time and a space for using them as well, but this is just something free and easy that you can use uh, that's inbuilt into this. And obviously you can use this with any software as well. Uh, Final Cut, you can do speed ramping in or DaVinci. So it's pretty. Um, it's a pretty great technique to use and it's, it's free in all the softwares. So yeah, get creative with it. Let me know how you've used it. I'd actually love to see like you guys' videos. I know some of my videos are, you know, getting a bit more traction, a bit more views. It'd be really nice to see what you kind of, what you, you guys are up to and what you're creating. Cause that's, uh, you know, that's what's pretty inspiring is seeing what other people are doing with their artwork. So uh, yeah, link it down in the comments below and I'll, I'll try and give it a view or DM me on Instagram as well. My Instagram's in the description. So thanks a lot and uh, please like the video, please subscribe and I'll see you later. Thanks a lot.